around me, would ya? If you are an athlete looking to up your goal setting game in 2020, then stick around because this video was made just for you. I hope you had a great Christmas break. I know that I did spend a lot of time with my family on the beach and I found out that Santa Claus must be real because look what I got in my stocking. Put these guys on my stocking stuffers for volleyball players list in my last video and so now I know at least one person watched it so that's, that's great news for me. <laughs> What's up guys, my name is Kira and I am a professional volleyball player. I've been doing that for the past 10 years and I am a terrible goal setter. I know that's probably the worst way to start a video entitled goal setting for 2020, but that is just to say that I have spent the last few days doing my due diligence, researching the topic, and turns out, yeah, I learned a couple things. I'm gonna share with you my top 10 most valuable tips for goal setting as an athlete in 2020. Starting right now. <laughs> the first thing is think about the big picture. You don't wanna set these goals without knowing exactly where you are in your life and what it is you want to accomplish. So sit down, look at your life, look at your career in volleyball, for example, and think, where do I wanna be? 10 years from now, five years from now, one year from now, and work backwards that way. Focus on your priority. For example, let's say you're a high school junior and you want to get recruited to play in university next year, or you are in university and you want to go play pro, or you're already playing pro and maybe you're in Germany or you're in Spain and you want to go to Italy eventually. So these are big picture goals that are gonna be overarching, that are gonna dictate all the rest of your smaller goals. Obviously there are a lot of chips that need to fall into place for this to happen, but this, this overarching idea will shoot you in the right direction. I think goal setting can be overwhelming because it's hard to know where to start. So something that helps is to know the difference between outcome goals, performance goals, and process goals. So the outcome goal is like the big picture goal. It is results based and it's kind of out of our control ultimately. That's things like getting a scholarship to university, getting on a team to play pro, getting hired to play in Italy. Those are the outcome goals that are not necessarily in our control. Then you got your process goals. Those are like habits and behaviors that will improve your situation on a smaller scale day by day. So let's say for example, if you want to improve your setting, you do 100 setting reps per day. Then you have performance goals. So of those process goals, what, what standard are they at? How, how well are you performing in those process goals, for example? So if you're doing those 100 sets, how many of them are actually going to target? And hopefully it improves over time. So knowing the difference between these kind of goals will help when it comes to actually setting your own goals as a volleyball player. Your goals should be smart and that doesn't mean they need a high IQ or they need to have a high SAT score. The acronym SMART stands for, it's all right in here because I ain't gonna remember, specific so they're clearly defined, measurable which means you can measure them and that means you can celebrate when you are successful, when you achieve them. They should be attainable, so very realistic, but still challenging, because then the success is oh so sweet. You want them to be relevant, so they have to be aligned with your bigger picture goal, otherwise you're just kind of wasting your time. And they should be time bound, so that means, gives you a sense of urgency, there's a deadline, you've gotta get it done at a certain time. Breaking it down, if you wanna get from A to Z, you know there are tons of steps in between that you gotta go through, and that is the process of goal setting, breaking down that big picture idea into smaller, smaller bite-sized chunks. So for example, you wanna get recruited to university, that's the big picture, how are you gonna get there? Well, you need to be a good volleyball player, you need to have good grades, and you need to follow the recruitment process, which is all sorts of things like getting a video done, talking to the coaches by email, going on visits, but then you can break that down even further. So if you wanna be a good volleyball player, how are you gonna improve? So I'm a middle blocker, my most important skills are blocking, attacking, and then serving. So I'm gonna focus on those when I'm setting my process goals. You just gotta think big, 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 all the way down to the minutia, the tiniest little 1% changes that you can make that will help you get to your big picture goal. I feel like I've said big picture about 20 times and I've only been five minutes into this video. Number five, identifying obstacles. So it's really easy to make these big lofty goals and you have dreams and ambitions and hopes and then as soon as the smallest obstacle comes or 
somebody invites you to a party or you want to sleep in because you're tired, you kind of lose sight of where you want to go. So identifying sacrifices that you're going to have to make before they even arise helps you to recognize when they do come up so you have some sort of system in place. You already have your decision made. You already have something to combat this obstacle. Does that make sense? <laughs> for example, an obstacle between myself as a, for example, if I'm a high school player and I want to get recruited to college, let's keep that example. An obstacle between myself and the coach of the university seeing me at my best might be, I don't get a lot of playing time. Yeah, the coach doesn't put me on the court, so what can I do? I, first of all, just think about the things that I can control. My effort that I put in on and off the court, in the weight room, the positive vibes that I'm giving to my teammates, also from the bench, and then in those precious moments when I do get to play. And outside of that, talking to my coaches. Maybe if they feel that they're in on my goals, they're gonna be more likely to help me, support me in getting to where I wanna go. Number six is to create habits. So let's say one of your process goals is to do extra abs or extra puff, push, puff, puff ups or extra push ups. Create habits, do it at the same time every single day. So maybe grab a partner and say, hey, before training or after training, we're gonna do abs. Like we used to do this with the national team. We would do, we called it ab club. So a couple of us started it and we did abs every day after training. And then a couple more people joined in. And by the end of the season, everyone was doing ab club and it didn't even feel like extra work. It was almost just like something at the end of training that we all just did and enjoyed and got us one step closer to our little goals. It's kind of like creating a support system, a routine routine and a habit, you're more likely to stick to it if you do it every single day at the same time. And don't be afraid to change it up. If your body is not responding to, let's say, push-ups every day, switch it up. Maybe do planks or extra reps in bench press. Or if you're wanting to improve your shoulder strength because you're a blocker and you want to improve your blocking, for example, don't get stuck in a rut of saying, I have to do this because this was my goal. You can change it. Change your process goals if you feel. Ain't nobody gonna stop you. Number seven is only compare you to you. It's awesome having idols and role models and people you look up to, but you only see a snippet of them. You see where they are now. And yes, she's awesome. She's strong. She's beautiful. She's killing it on the court, but you didn't see the 10 years of work she put in to get there. So don't let yourself get discouraged by having people that you look up to, or you might try and emulate, but focus on you being the best version of you. So are you better than you were yesterday, or you were last week, or you were last season, or two years ago, three years ago? Try to improve day by day on you and keep records so you can look back and you can say, oh yeah, I am much better than I was a couple years ago. I can do this. I can lift this much weight. I can put 50 sets in out of 100 whereas last year I could only put 30. If you keep records, you can look back and see how far you've come and you can pat yourself on the back. <laughs> Number eight is write it down. <laughs> this is, seems pretty simple, but I think that keeping a notebook is one of the most powerful things you can do as an athlete because you can put everything in there. It's a little bit old school to actually write things down, but if you read a book recently, you can take notes on it. If you got feedback from your coach, if you are keeping records of your performance in the weight room. Maybe there's some quotes you really love. Maybe you learned some wisdom from a video on YouTube. <laughs> Whatever it is, maybe you just wanna draw pretty pictures. You know what, you do you, boo. You make that notebook your own. And I just find that it's a really great way to keep track of progress and also to keep motivated. And as you're writing down your goals, maybe don't just write them down on a piece of paper and stick it on the fridge. Make a piece of artwork out of it. Put it in huge letters, print it out, paint it, put it on your wall so you see it and you are inspired by it every day. It's not just scribbled on a sticky note and put on the fridge. If you just have it written down and it's in the same place every day, your mind kind of starts to ignore it. But if you Maybe write it out in orange and then print it out with a picture of a panda or put it in your car. If you move it around every so often, then it stays fresh and your mind cannot ignore it. Number nine is to visualize daily. So I've recently gotten a little bit into sort of, I wouldn't say meditation, but sort of like finding a bit of headspace, you might call it. If you just close your eyes, just picture yourself where it is that you wanna be in however many years it is that your goal has been set for. It's powerful. It's more powerful than I realized because not only does it keep you motivated, it helps you start to believe that it could be real. So whether your goal is very lofty, like going to play in Italy or getting a scholarship to university, the more you visualize it and imagine it to be real, the more your psyche, there's just something that goes on up there and I don't know really what it is, but something about the law of attraction and 
just sending positive vibes into the universe. It sounds really wishy-washy as I'm saying it out loud, but I believe in it. I think there is nothing more powerful than the human mind and you've got to use it to your advantage. Number 10 and my last and final tip for you is to keep it exciting. You want something that's gonna motivate you every single day. So choose something that's not for your family, for your team, for your coaches. It's something for you that is gonna help you be the best version of you. Maybe you reward yourself after small victories and that'll keep you inspired or Maybe you share little successes on photos on your social media to get support from your community. Don't be shy. People are really much more supportive than you think. And if you create an emotional attachment to your goals, you're much more likely to stick to them and to protect them like they are your family and to stick to them when tough days come up and obstacles are in your face. Like, hey, let's go out drinking. And you're like, no, I've got to go to lifting tomorrow morning. Like so. And now that I have created this arsenal of goal setting information thanks to these last few days of research that I've been doing. I am going to be sitting down and setting some goals for myself uh, for 2020 and starting with volleyball and family and this YouTube channel because I started it a few months ago with just the goal of combining my passions for volleyball and for photography into one little video baby. <laughs> it's becoming clear to me that I really just enjoy connecting with people with similar passions. So that's what this YouTube is, is kind of growing towards being. So I've got a lot of exciting videos coming up in 2020 and I really need your help. I just need you to poke that little subscribe button, hit me a little like, maybe, maybe a little bell as well because I'm just trying to get these videos out into the universe and the more people that are impacted or interested in them, the more likely I am to keep making them and the more likely that this thing will grow into something. I don't exactly know what it is yet, but we will find out. And before you go anywhere, if you made it this far, I've got a bunch of other videos you might be interested in. They are linked right here. Go check them out and I will see you over there. Okay, bye.